Good morning. Welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel, we have John 16, 33. I have said these things to you, that in you, that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So yeah, I feel like I'm taking on the world. There's a couple things we're going to talk about today. Um, one personal, a couple of sewing. Yeah. Okay. And then I've got a real treat for you. Okay. <laughs> Yay. All right. So I did, I have been off all week and, um, Monday, of course, was Labor Day. Tuesday, I went and had lunch with a friend. Wednesday, of course, I went to the farm and I took all those pictures. Thursday, did I do Thursday? There was something I did Thursday, but I can't remember what. I had something going, oh, Thursday, I did the 100 mile yard sale. Um, and found a few treasures, found a few things for uh, RJ and Macy and just nothing, no fantastic finds. Everybody had put signs of vintage this and jacked the prices of it. It wasn't like the garage sale that I remember as a kid and, and as a, uh, you know, as even in my twenties, you know, I got my punch bowl with all eight cups and all that for my wedding for $5 at a garage sale. Just saying, um, $5 was a big price to pay, but I have the bowl. I have all the hooks, all the cups, I have the ladle, everything. And at that time, of course they were going very expensive. So, um, then Friday I went back to the farm. And I guess you guys know that the Saturday before I was fighting with my phone and I, it wouldn't see the SIM card. I had to get a whole new phone, which means I had to learn all kinds of new stuff, get it set up to do all the things I needed it to do. Remember all the passwords, which that in itself is a chore. Um, yeah, cause not all of them, they transfer, but they don't autofill now. So I have to go and find them and oh my gosh, anyway. So, um, then Saturday and Sunday, I didn't do a whole lot. I took care of this house, uh, did the laundry and the dishes and, and just cleaned this house. Cause I had let this house go, um, by being gone so much. And then, uh, Monday, which was yesterday, I went back to the farm. Now I did find time and I can't remember what day I did, but I finished. I got my kit in, I ordered it on Amazon. And it is for key fobs. Sorry about all the packaging, but I got the tool and I got three different, uh, metal cones of, uh, clips. And I like it better than the way I was doing it before. It just looks very much finished. And anyway, so I finished these five, they go to work. These are for, uh, these are birthday gifts for everyone at work. They get whatever one I randomly pick out. So yeah, I got those done. Then I grabbed this handy dandy thing and I got this as a gift and I don't have my little thing in there. Um, and that's cause I just started, I got it as a gift and I was like one day I made a list in it and that was it. Well, this is going to be the new tiny house book. Um, I've already decided that I am going to put in a solar generator. Um, they make some compact ones. I figured out that I need at least 1800 Watts. It will be one of the biggest investments, but it will run everything from a toaster oven, washer dryer combo, um, a coffee machine, bread maker, the small fridge, um, a small AC, it'll charge all my laptop, my phone, my, uh, watch. It will run a radio. It will run my sewing machines, my sergers and my iron. So those are the things that I have said that I would need. I'm going to go, I, I've looked at 1800 watt ones and the one I'm looking at, uh, is um 
it has a car charger on it so I can charge it off the battery. It actually has a jack so I can jump start my car if something was to happen. It comes with one or two solar panels, whichever I choose. Um, and you can add a larger battery to it. So I can get the small one and then I can add the next one so I can actually grow the unit. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research on that as well. So I have my new um, tiny house book. So the last thing I did was um, I learned to uh, get my camera to put stuff on here. I had to go buy a new cable. It was a mess to be honest with you. So anyway, I have one clip that I want to share that is from two days ago, not yesterday. So Friday, I worked Wednesday, Friday, and Monday at the farm. And from here on out, it'll only be once a week because I have to go back to work. Uh, I'm off vacation. And, and so, uh, and I do have some time off when the kids get married. So I will be going back there extra then. But other than that, um, it's just going to be, I'm down to once a week because that's when I can get there. So it'll be either Saturday or a Sunday morning. And then I have the rest of the weekend. So, um, here is the little clip that I just want to show you. I was so excited. It's silly, but here it is. Okay. This makes me very happy. Just so you know, that is a plant that survived. It's lemon. Yay. And just so you know, I have this all over and a sticker in my hand and yeah, but I'm having fun. Okay. So yeah, I found a little, um, lemon bomb there and I was super excited. Something has survived. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous, but like my walking onions, my mint and chocolate, I haven't gotten over to that area so far of all of the plants that I had growing out there. Those big, tall things have choked everything out, some of the trees included, but we're going to, uh, um, put, there's several little clips because so the first day I went out there, I went out with the weed eater and lawnmower gas and that and my gloves, and that was about it. Uh, then that just didn't work. It it was too much. I was having to pull them up. So the next, on my way back to where I live in Collinsville, I stopped and I got loppers and I got nippers and I got um something oh a handsaw and I thought okay the next time I go back I'm gonna make more progress so I was using those things the second day and I got a little further it was a little bit better but the third time um a roommate and I were talking and roommate says you know what I really want is one of those conversion kits that go on the weed eater that has a blade and I had tried to order one off of Amazon it has to go back because the shaft part was different anyway we went out and happened to find at Lowe's, I believe, the exact kit that was needed. Invested in it, um, it was $50. Okay, it was 49 something. And so I've invested in the kit and roommate's happy because, you know, a new toy and roommate has some brush down around the pond. And we I cleared down there the first day just to learn to use it. And then I took it back and the next video you're going to see, um, it's kind of like being back out at the farm because I had the camera going. It was just me. I didn't have a camera person. So, you know, a, a little adjustments and stuff like that. But I went out and actually talk about using the machine and stuff. And it, it's really, I'm super excited. I made so much progress with that. Um, it was amazing. So. Here is the video of my day yesterday. Good morning. So I think I figured out my uh, camera here. That's Ruby. Hello. Odie's over there going through the gate. Um, good morning, fellas and ladies. And this is what I'm starting with today. But today I brought a new tool. Um, I kind of stole it. Isn't that just beautiful? The sun coming up over the house. Anyway. Um... 
I didn't steal another tool, but I did steal a tool. So I will get it out and show you what I'm going to be working with today. So here she is. She looks like a lawnmower or a weed eater. But on the end, we have put a conversion kit. And that is going to help me take down those big, tall things right over there. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay, you guys, so in just a few minutes, I have cleared this little tree out. Um, you can see there are a couple of problems. Now, remember, you're just using a weed eater with a blade on it. Um, is it worth the investment? Oh, yes. So, um, the one thing is, is when you're clearing tall brush like this, unfortunately, you can't see where you've really gotten and where you haven't. So, I have to take the rake and pull it out. Um, I got most of it, but... I made a big dent in it and I'm going to take it and you know finish up this little section here and my brush pile is growing because a lot of that came right out of here so don't know if I can save this tree we're going to see um, I think if I take quite a bit of it out then it will come back stronger because it's not dead dead um, it just it's probably lack of water on this one so we'll see um, where we've been in drought conditions for almost a year now so yeah but anyway, I plan on keeping at it, and that little saw thing is definitely worth the money because this is just a few minutes worth of work. I spend more time carrying stuff over the brush pile than I do actually chopping it down. It's a good thing. Hey guys, so this is my first brush pile, and I will say I've gotten further today than I have in the two days I've been out here um, just because of the blade. Um, that thing really knocks it down. I've got a second burn pile here, which is honestly full of uh, weeds, not wood and trees. So they will go up pretty easy. Right now we're in drought conditions, so we're not going to do that. I literally have already cleared this, got all this cleared. Um, the only thing I am finding is that when... I uh, cut these down you can't see see it leaves these stumps and they're horrible to step on so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rake across it get everything out of here and then yeah there's the tiny out. Um, I just have this little section right here to do and I will be approximately half done um, I think a little over half done because I hope I'm getting the uh, fire pit and swinger right there and so, yeah, and the over half done comes because I've gone further than half out on certain spots, like right there, getting to my tree with any luck, okay? And, and this is pretty ambitious for today. I want to get that big tree and to the swing and the fire pit and get this backed up quite a bit. And this will be gone today. This is my next step, but I got to get these weeds pulled out of here and I've got to take the blade and I'm at least going to make a path that has no stumps um, just because it is what it is but I'm telling you if you have a weed eater this blade kit is well worth the investment honestly it is awesome regular old weed eater same one I've been using with a blade on the end it's amazing I went back to the car to get a drink and it hit me that I need to cover one other thing about this new tool that I'm using. So you can see I have cleared quite a bit. Now this is a big brush pile here and I really opened this up. You couldn't even see all of this tree or that tree. Um, you couldn't even see the house. And so um, this little brush right here uh, and of course, I've actually done some back up, oops, sorry, back up underneath there in that tree. Some of this is actually, some of this right here is actually laid over. It just doesn't look it because I just got it cut. But anyway, so one of the things that I wanted to address is I have done all of this and I have not filled my gas tank. I had, flip it on the side here. Let's see if we can see I had about a half a tank a little over half a tank and I don't know if you can see that it's right there um, it wasn't full full but it wasn't empty either so I have cleared 
quite a bit on that little bitty tank of gas just so you know um and it's like i said i've cleared this tree out i've got that one that i broke down but didn't get that's why i'm saying you miss some every once in a while i can go back and pick them up um but yeah i mean i've cleared quite a bit and haven't used a fraction of the gas or a fraction of my time so yeah isn't that awesome I love it honestly I think I love this little tool and it's just a conversion kit for your weed eater that puts a saw blade on the end it's awesome definitely worth the investment so here's what I've gotten done this is this end brush pile that is that end brush pile and I know you can't see the house because of it but all the brush between it and the house are done um that little uh, saw blade on the weed eater does the trick to take down a lot. Um, the thing is then you got to stop to clear out so you can see exactly what you've cut. Um, and I came back for this guy right here. You can see that it's taking down pretty big. That's not even the biggest one. It's just a piece I found. Um, but there's the wood pile. It'll be a burn pile. That along the front of the house is all down. Um, I just haven't gotten it. it. It's where I cleared the first path the first day I was out here. And I just kind of laid them up against there. And they're going to go over to that other burn pile. As you can see, I've got my swing cleared out. I'm on my way to having the fire pit cleared out. I also went around back again. And I made a path through there and I cleared out the back of it because I don't want those trees on the house so yeah and then I don't know if you can see over here I didn't get all of this over here done um, but I got a lot of that corner done and this a lot of it's down you just can't tell because it still stands you know so anyway but I'm gonna head out and uh, the only downfall to it is it does take some practice to get these nubs down. And I'm hoping I can show you a couple. See there? And when you step on them, they don't give. It's like stepping on a, a I don't know, a piece of board or something, you know? And so I was getting them a little bit closer, but still oops, not down to the earth. And you can get them down to the earth, but honestly, it threw up so much dust and dirt. I bet choked. It was horrible. And it's because there's no rain. But yeah. So got the little tree cleared off a little bit. It's gonna be sawed down. There is more laying down in here. And I wish you could see what's actually laid down and what isn't. Because it really does take it back quite a bit. And that's a big shade tree there. I gotta get under there and trim the branches. Here comes the train. So I'm gonna get off here and I will see y'all later. I'm headed home. Bye. Now in that video, of course, I was by myself, so a lot of it is just me talking and showing you. Um but I did have some help and I'll show you who I had. Yeah, so I had um, Ruby and Odie, and, you know, years ago, we had Jethro, and he has since passed away. Uh, he passed away at the age of 12 or 13, right in there. And so, yeah, he he was awesome. Uh, Ruby looks a lot like Jethro. Odie just has this dopey look on his face all the time. I don't know. But anyway, those are my two buds, and they hang out with me most of the time in the morning. The other thing that I did out there was um, I picked up trash that had blown from storms and all that, and I took a big old bag of trash and brought it here and threw it in the dumpster. Um, so did that. The one thing that I haven't said a whole lot about is um, going back. Um, it's been kind of hard, and it's kind of weird because the hard that I was thinking of 
it isn't the heart I thought it would be. Um, so the heart is, is that RJ says it's odd or uncomfortable for me to be out there. It's just him and me. And that's, it was him and me for how many years out there. I mean, y'all saw the videos that it was just him and I, him and I, him and I, and he's like, I'm used to being alone now. Well, he's getting ready to get married. So that's going to change. Um, but it shouldn't be weird. And he needs to realize that. And I had told him this from the time that I left, I will be back. I needed time to number one, get away from his father and I stopped the constant griping and yelling and screaming and, and, and it was just constant fights. So I needed time to clear my head, get things where I could process and I could do and for my mental health. Um, now going back there, of course, I'm hitting resistance from not so much his father. Um, I actually ran into his father uh, Friday when I was out there. And we were cordial. Everything was cool. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Good, you know. And we went our separate way. I mean, it's not a big deal. Um, but then it's RJ who is like, I'm not used to you being out of here. So I don't know. I don't know. It's just growing pains because I'm not going anywhere. That tiny house is my home. And I've already gotten prices for doing the floor. Um, I have got to get it delivered. So I'm going to try and get a hold of one of the lumber yards. There's two lumber yards up north, both that deliver to the farm. And I just have to time it right. And I will have to have it there like first thing Saturday morning. Um, but I don't think they deliver on Saturday. So I probably will have to have, I'll probably have to drive down Friday night or whatever and meet up with them and and if I can get the stuff for the flooring in there, then the real fun begins. Um, once I get the floor in, uh, I am going to insulate all the walls uh, and then get that up. And it, the progress will be faster once I get the land back in shape. But I've got to get the land back in shape. And that is the hard work of it. So the building part, I love. It's my favorite part. The land I've got to get back under control. So, anyway, I hope you guys at least enjoyed part of this video. Ooh, yeah. I am off to the zoo with a girlfriend today because tomorrow I have to go back to work. But I have to make money to work on the tiny house. So, I have that new, um, I'm not going to let work get to me because it's a means to an end. It's a means to getting my tiny house done and getting, you know, my place. Um, here I live with roommate. We've discussed this before. This is roommate's mom's house. This is not home. Um, I need a place of my own. I need my secure, you know, God says I have the right to be happy. I'm happiest out of the farm. I am going to, now I have downsized my plan a little bit. Um, I don't plan on having one. She, I'm just going to have a milk goat and she will have a baby once a year and the Billy will only be brought in to breed her, um, once a year. So it's just going to be me, the dog and a goat and she'll have a baby. Uh, and then when it comes time to keep another one, you know, the goat, if it gets too old, can't be bred, whatever. I'm going to keep one of her female babies so that I may have two goats at a time. Um, but it will be her offspring. So, and we'll never have the Billy problem of rotating them and having to keep pens separate. They will just come in for goat um, breeding season. So, yeah, I'll put a belt on him. And once she's bred, he's gone. So, all right. That is the plan. I am super energized, ready to go. Today I'm going to the zoo with a friend, going to enjoy that, and then tomorrow I'm back to work, so I won't see you guys for a week. But, in the upside, I will have been back to the farm either Saturday or Sunday morning, so you should see more tiny house updates and stuff as we go. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great week. God bless.